So if I consider the quadratic function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 13x plus 15, then when I'm graphing my calculator, as long as I can see the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex, I should be in pretty good shape. So the window settings I'm going to use are going to be, the x settings are going to be a minimum of negative 5, a maximum of 10, and a scale of 1. For the y's, I'm going to use a minimum of negative 10, a maximum of 30, and a scale of 5. When I am determining the coordinates of the vertex, in this case, it opens upwards, so I have to go second trace and find my minimum. When I do this, then I'm going to see that the coordinates are at 3.25 and negative 6.125. Explain how to use the coordinates of the vertex to determine the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals the x value at the vertex. So in this case, it's going to be x is equal to 3.25. When I'm determining the x and y intercepts, then the x-intercept, there's two of them, they cross twice, are going to be at 1.5, And 5. The y-intercept is at 15. If I look at my equation in this form, the nice thing is if the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, if x is equal to 0, this will cancel out, this will cancel out, the y-intercept is represented by the constant in my equation. If I'm using the x-intercepts to verify the equation in the axis symmetry, then I would say that the x is equal to the first intercept plus the second intercept divided by 2, or 6.5 divided by 2, 3.25, which does match the information that I have. What is the minimum value of the function? The minimum value is the y value at the vertex. The minimum is negative 6.125. And what is the domain in the range? The domain is easy. It's represented by x, and it's just xer. The range is going to be that's represented by y. It opens upwards, so y has to be greater than or equal to negative 6.125, where y e r. If I'm determining the vertex from the equation of the axis of symmetry, so the coordinates of the vertex of the graph, if the quadratic function can be determined from the equation of the axis of symmetry, if we know the equation of the function. The line x is equal to 2 is the axis of symmetry of the graph y is equal to x squared minus 16x minus 9. 
How can we algebraically determine the coordinates of the vertex? Well, we know that for the axis of symmetry, that is going to be part of it. The axis of symmetry is the x value at the vertex. If I know the x value at the vertex, then I can solve for what the y value at the vertex is. I'm going to say that the y value is going to equal, well, if x is 2, 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2 minus 9. 2 squared is going to be 4. Negative 16 times 2 is going to be negative 32 minus 9 y is equal to 4 times 4 is 16 and negative 32 minus 9 gives me negative 41 and 16 minus 41 is going to give me negative 25 and there's my vertex If I'm investigating the parameters of A, B, and C, or what the A value does, what the B value does, and what the C value does, if I have the equation y is equal to ax squared and I leave out B and C, that means that B is equal to 0 and C is equal to 0. If I'm investigating what happens to the graph of the function when the value of a is changed using both positive and negative values for the parameter of a, then I can say that changing the value of a without changing the sign makes the graph narrower or wider. So as long as I leave it positive, it's just going to make it more narrow or more wide. If A is negative, the graph opens down. What about the value of b? So if I consider the equation y is equal to x squared plus bx, in this case, a isn't listed, but a isn't actually 0. a is this imaginary coefficient of 1. So a would equal 1, and c doesn't exist, so c is going to equal 0. If I'm playing around with b and changing the value, then I'm going to say that as the value of b changes, it creates a second x-intercept at negative b. So whatever the opposite of b is, it's going to create a new x-intercept there. If I'm playing around with c, 
then A is going to be equal to 1, and B is going to equal to 0. And as we've already discovered from the last one we did, the y-intercept always equals C. If I'm doing a summary of the characteristics from what we found, then the shape of the graph is a parabola. The graph is symmetrical about a vertical line called the axis of symmetry. If A is greater than zero, the parabola is going to open up, and the vertex is going to be a minimum point. The y-coordinate of the vertex is the minimum value of the function. If A is less than zero or negative, the graph is going to open down. Now I'm going to have a maximum point, which means that the y value of the vertex is going to be the maximum value. The domain of the graph is easy. It's x where x, e, r. If c, or the constant, is greater than 0, then it's going to have a positive y-intercept. If it is less than 0, it's going to have a negative y-intercept. And we can see pictures of this right here. Go ahead and try some practice.